हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अन अकेडमी वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ द नुआंस्ड एंड इन दिस सेशन लेट्स ट्राइन अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट वर द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशंस व्हिच वर कंडक्टेड इन द रिसेंटली कंक्लूडेड वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस थर्टींथ मिनिस्ट्रियल कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली हाउ वॉज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एबल टू प्रोटेक्ट द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ इट्स फार्मर्स एज वेल एज फिशर्स इन द डिस्कशन लेट स्टार्ट फर्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट द बेसिक पॉइंट वेन एवर यू कम अक्रॉस द टर्म मिनिस्टेरियल कॉन्फ्रेंस वॉट डज इट मीन द मिनिस्टेरियल कॉन्फ्रेंस रेप्रेजेंट द हाइएस्ट डिसीजन मेकिंग बॉडी अंडर वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द मिनिस्टेरियल कॉन्फ्रेंस मीट्स जनरली वंस एवरी टू इयर्स एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस मिनिस्टेरियल कॉन्फ्रेंस द मेंबर कंट्रीज or the representative of the member countries will come together hold discussions deliberations and will come out with certain agreements the last ministerial conference before the 13th which concluded very very recently the previous was conducted in the year 2022 and the current one was conducted in the last week itself that is at the end of month of february but more importantly during the discussions especially this time it is stated that there were lot of lot of oppositions to various proposals which were put forward by many other countries by india and whatever propo proposals were put forward by india there was opposition by many other countries and please remember this wto generally functions on the concept concept of consensus means all the member countries should come together agree to these proposals only then these are accepted these are accepted as agreements or the proposals are accepted as agreements but before i go forward please understand is it compulsory that all the member countries always accept these proposals not necessary under wto there is a provision under this provision even if a couple of these member countries or let's say some of these member countries want to bring in a proposal and ensure that these proposals are applicable only to those only to these member countries that is also allowed and that is generally referred to as a plurilateral agreement now in the recently concluded ministerial conference what are the most important focus areas specifically targeting or let's say specifically touching the syllabus in the upsc civil services examination let's try and understand all these areas one by one point number 1 the public stock holding issue what is this public stock holding issue government of india announces a lot of support to agriculture sector in india not just agriculture but many other sectors but in the agriculture sector government announces a policy called as minimum support price msp and this minimum support price has been a point of contention between the government of india as well as many other countries for example usa what is the contention all about government of india says because the number of poor people in india are very high number of farmers who are involved are also very high so government of india needs to ensure that sufficient assistance is provided for these farmers cultivation is done procurement of the food grains is done and these food grains are used for distribution purposes in simple terms government by providing these kinds of measures or support measures will ensure there is a food security through public stock holding now the contention is that india on one side will provide these kind of supporting measures and on the other side india is also member of agreement on agriculture a o a and under agreement on agriculture the member countries are supposed to limit their supporting measures up to certain level of the value of their production again do not get into the methodology or the calculation associated with all of this because the way other countries calculate this is different the way india calculates this is different now many of you say sir what do you mean by calculation here a very simple point under agreement on agriculture developing countries such as india 
is not supposed to provide support to the extent of more than 10% of value of production. And when I say support, they call this as trade distortionary measures or aggregate measure of support. So the trade distortionary measures should not be more than 10% of value of production. And for developed countries, the limit is fixed at 5% of value of production. But in case of India, because government provides MSP, the amount of subsidy that is provided, which are trade distortionary, is much, much higher. At least this is what is claimed by Western economists. But on the other side, government of India says, according to our calculation, it is much, much lower. And this is not a new thing. For many, many years now, India as well as other countries have been fighting, have been at loggerheads regarding the concept of food subsidy or food security issue. And this was a centerpiece, or this came into fore in the Bali conference back in the year 2013. And government of India, because I say, please remember, WTO functions on consensus. India threatened that it will not be participating in many of these discussions. It will be withholding consent, etc. In 2013 Bali conference, there was an introduction of peace clause. And please remember, this was mentioned by representative of government of India, the trade minister very recently. There was introduction of a term peace clause, provision of peace clause. What is a peace clause? It is basically protecting developing countries, even if they cross the support, even if the support crosses the threshold, other countries cannot file a complaint against developing countries. The developed countries cannot drag these developing countries to WTO dispute settlement body. That is called as a peace clause. But when this was introduced, it was assumed that this will be a temporary measure, not a permanent solution, a temporary measure. And that is the reason government of India, again and again, in multiple, right, the World Trade Organization's ministerial conferences, as well as other conferences, has been demanding a permanent solution. And the same issue was raised again in 13th ministerial conference. There was a lot of opposition. There were a lot of proposals which were put forward. Some of the proposals were not acceptable to India. Some others were not accept acceptable to other countries. In fact, many other countries stated that India should provide more market access to their exports, agriculture exports, which will come into India. So government of India basically stated at the end of it, basically stated they want a permanent solution for the food security issue. And what was the outcome in the ministerial conference? The member countries did not come to any arrangement, any agreement regarding public stockholding issue or a permanent solution for that. So this was right, not at all in the sense there was no conclusion regarding a permanent solution for the PSH issue. issue. In fact, when the peace clause was introduced, it was expected that by 2017, we will have a permanent solution. But even after that, multiple conferences have taken place. And even today, there is no permanent solution for the food security issue. In fact, this was discussed even that in the 12th ministerial conference. Now after this, fishery subsidy. What is this idea of a fishery subsidy? Please understand this. Around the world, many countries provide subsidies for fishers. These fishers could be individual fishers, that is fishermen. These could be companies which are involved in fishing, that is a commercial fishing, etc. And over a period of time, there is a concern that because the government will provide a lot of subsidies, the fishing activity has increased and the amount of fishing that is being done will ensure that over a period of time, the number of fishes will fall down and we will not be able to have any kind of fishing over a period of time if this is not controlled. And that is a precise reason. In fact, under the sustainable development goal also, there is a goal for controlling fishing. In fact, the technical term they use is IUU, illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. Now over a period of time, and this is nothing new, please understand this. Over a period of time, under WTO, there has been a lot of discussion regarding how to control, how to ensure that there is a sustainable growth of fishes 
in the sea and there is no over exploitation of the resources. In fact, the discussion regarding fishery subsidy started in the fourth ministerial conference itself. That is Doha. It started in Doha, fourth ministerial conference, 2001. After that, in multiple ministerial conferences, this has been discussed. Even in the last ministerial conference, 12th one, it was discussed. 13th also, it was discussed. Now, what is the contention? The contention is that government of India says there are many countries around the world, many countries around the world, which or wherein government provides a lot of subsidies and these subsidies are used for fishing. And there are also many countries wherein the companies are present and this commercial fishing has been done to a very great extent. But the proposals which have been put forward, the government says, will target fishermen in India. And millions of fishermen are present in India and most of them are not involved in the commercial fishing activity. And the earnings of these fishermen, the livelihood dependence on the fishing activity is very, very high. So government of India says, why can't we have a proposal wherein we will try to control the over exploitation which is done by the commercial fisheries rather than trying to target our fishers who are very, very small fishers compared to other countries whose livelihood dependence is very, very high, whose income source is very less. So this is the viewpoint of government of India. And that is the precise reason even in the current ministerial conference, there was no decision arrived at on the concept or the issue of fishery subsidy. So to, st to start with, to begin with, government of India was very clear at any cost, we will try to protect the interest of our farmers as well as the fishermen at any cost and by ensuring that or uh, because there was no agreement regarding the public stock holding issue as well as the fishery subsidy, no reforms will be implemented or there is no mandate on government of India to control all of these uh, subsidies now. Third one, e-commerce moratorium. E-commerce moratorium. What is this e-commerce moratorium? Please understand. Back in the year 1998, back in the year 1998, under, under the WTO, the member countries agreed that whenever there is a transfer of Right, let's say certain services. For example, you will purchase games from a foreign company online, which means there is a transfer of services that is the digital goods online. You will basically, let's say, purchase music online. You will purchase movies online across the border. So across the border, when these digital services or goods will be transferred like this, there was no taxation that was supposed to be imposed. And this originated from the year 1998. India was one of the member countries which agreed that, okay, let's not impose taxes on such digital transfers across the border. But over a period of time, over a period of time, this kind of a trade has increased. The cross-border transfers have increased. That is point number one. Point number two, government of India now says, because of the rise in the cross-border transfers of such products and because we are not implementing, we are, we are not imposing any kind of taxes on these, we are losing lot of money. We are losing lot of tax revenues. And that is a precise reason even before, even before the ministerial conference began, government of India categorically stated that we are opposed to any extension of this e-commerce moratorium, that is any stop on customs duties, we will not accept it. We want to impose those taxes and we want to collect tax revenues. In fact, even before the World Trade Organization conference started, many of the representatives in India related to this sector approached government and stated that the stand of government of India will be detrimental to the growth of the sector in India. Because in the last couple of years, there has been a lot of investment done. There has been a lot of cross-border flows of, let's say, designs, other types of softwares, etc. associated with such an industry itself. So if now government of India will go ahead, oppose the extension of moratorium 
and these uh, right let's say taxes will be reimposed that is 1998 moratorium which has been extended will be withdrawn governments will start imposing the taxes then this will disrupt this will affect the industry right but anyways government of india spoke about it in the ministerial conference it was discussed and it has been accepted to be extended by another two years it will be extended now next dispute settlement very very important concept or let's say one of the important areas of discussion for the last couple of years dispute settlement what is the issue all about here under the wto whenever there's a dispute between the member countries i repeat whenever there is a dispute between the member countries the member countries will approach a dispute settlement body and try to get this dispute resolved but the issue has been that under the dispute settlement body at one step there is appellate body there is appellate body and in the appellate body generally there are seven members who are appointed with the consensus of the member countries now in the appellate body what has happened is over a period of time out of seven members many people or many of these members they have finished their term the basic term or let's say the tenure of these members is four years so they have finished their quota the four years tenure is over now there is supposed to be an appointment usa has opposed appointment to any of these members in the appellate body usa has been opposing now as a result of usa's opposition appointments have not taken place and because the appointments have not taken place the number of members in the appellate body has come down from 7 to 5 to 3 to 1 to 0 since 2019 i repeat since 2019 there is not even a single member in the appellate body of dispute settlement and the issue is that generally in the dispute settlement body the <coughs> dispute is taken up now there is a, a report that has been published by let's say a panel which is appointed by the dispute settlement body now the member country wants to oppose wants to appeal against the panel and now they will go to appellate body now they'll simply go to appellate body and in the appellate body three members generally take up this particular appeal now because there are no members because there are no members absolutely zero members now member countries who want to appeal this report of the panel there is no appellate body they will simply refer to this as appealing into wide appealing into wide and what would be the consequence of this member countries slowly and steadily will start losing faith on dispute settlement body in fact, at one point of time, dispute settlement body was considered to be the crown jewel of WTO. Today, it has become dysfunctional. Today, it has become dysfunctional. Member countries will go to appellate body. There are no members in the appellate body. The appeal will get stuck up at this point and there is no further movement. Anything related to this will not take place under the dispute settlement body. So the whole process of resolving the disputes has come to a standstill because of no members in the appellate body. And this has happened because USA has been opposing the appointment, to the appointment of the members into the appellate body. Next, important issue that was raised by government of India but was shot down, opposed by USA. Issue of reducing the cost of remittances. Understand this. India proposed, India came out with a proposal to reduce the cost of remittances. Over a period of time, India has become a very, very important country in terms of in remittances. It has been receiving more than 100 billion dollars in the last two years in terms of remittances. And as per RBI report itself, remittances form one of the largest source of the external assistance, especially to the low income middle income households so over a period of time it's a fact that we have started receiving huge amount of remittances but one issue that has been plaguing the issue or let's say the concept of remittances has been the cost of remittances 
how much does this does this does it cost to transfer money how much does it right have to how much money has to be spent to send the money to remit the money into india the global average i repeat the global average for remittances is around 6% but under the sustainable development goals under sdg we want to reduce it to half we want to bring it down to 3% by 2030 Now, in this regard, government of India came out with a proposal and stated that we need to reduce the cost of remittances. But this was opposed by USA. Hence, even this was not taken up by WTO as a part of the resolution or part of the declaration. So, these are certain very very important points that you must know regarding the World Trade Organization Ministerial Thirteen Conference. or ministerial conference number 13 which concluded last week if you like this initiative please hit the like button if you are yet to subscribe to our youtube channel kindly do it now thank you have a great day